you imagine if Formula One today had racing as tight as back when there was very little downforce? But the problem is, is that with the modern high downforce, very tightly strung aerodynamics cars, is that passing is very difficult as a result of dirty air. Now, the new rules have come out and for next year, for 2017, and their hope is to make the sport more exciting, but they really haven't done that much to address the overtaking issue. So today, as a professional aerodynamicist, I'm gonna be going through a few suggestions on how they could improve overtaking from an aerodynamics point of view. To start with, if you haven't watched my video on dirty air, you pretty much need to in order to understand the problem. So go on, click on the card and check it out. Now let's start at the front and work our way back. Fix number one, fix the front wing. Now the new rules change it to be 150 millimeters wider and swept back at about 12 degrees rearward. Now th there was talk of the sweep making it less sensitive to dirty air. I don't really see the logic behind that. I think it's more of an aesthetic change. But what does this mean in terms of aerodynamics? Well, the Y250 vortex is still there. What's the Y250 vortex? It's the one shed off the inside edge of the winglet and has been one of the most critical flow structures to control in a modern F1 car. Y250 does so much. It feeds the turning vane vortices to the floor, it controls the ingress of air at the sides, and all of these require very exact positioning and strengths of the vortices. This means high sensitivity to dirty air. Get rid of the Y250, lower the sensitivity. You can do this by mandating that the elements don't end at the center, so the wing goes the entire way across, like the sort of older F1 cars. Due to the still massive size under the new rules, the front wing is still gonna be a massive contributor of downforce. Therefore, it still has to be crazy complicated to make sure it's running as efficiently as possible. The complicated nature of the wing makes it more sensitive to dirty air. So to fix the front wing, make it so you can't have a Y250 vortex by running straight through, and reduce how complicated it is. Number two is fixing the floor. The new rules increased the width of the flat floor by 200 millimeters and made the allowable radii larger and up the diffuser height by 50 millimeters. They also increased the diffuser width by 50 millimeters and more importantly, allowed it to start 175 millimeters further forwards of the rear axle, whereas currently it can only start at the rear axle. This is the first step towards sort of a contoured floor. Now this means that we can increase the floor downforce and that's only a good thing as the floor is a very efficient source of downforce when designed correctly. Better efficiency is less wake, is less sturdy air, so better overtaking. However, the rules could have done a lot more in this regard. So to start with, you could have made the floor contour the entire way and then extend it much wider towards the tires. You don't want to extend it all the way out to the tires because that could inhibit wheel to wheel action because if the cars get close, they'll start to hit each other's floors really soon. But if you can get it out a little bit further and get more downforce from the floor, you're gonna get more efficient downforce, less sturdy air, better overtaking action. Remember that modern floor downforce is much better controlled than the old cars, so we don't have the porpoising issues like we used to have. And F1 cars being open wheelers mean they don't get air trapped underneath them, like the more sort of LMP style cars, which are known to, you know, flip. Number three is fixing the rear wing. Now, what did they do in the rules? They angled the end plates back for looks, and they moved the wing rearwards, lowered the height 150 millimeters, and up the width to one meter. Now, this is good for total downforce because F1 in recent times has struggled for rear aero with the really narrow wings, but it's not the best solution for overtaking. The increase in width is great as it decreases the effective upwash for a given amount of downforce and the end plate vortex strengths are also reduced for that same amount of downforce. Although in reality, teams are probably just gonna use this to wind on more downforce and end up with roughly the same sort of upwash as now, except they are a little bit wider. Moving the wing down though, however, brings the location of the majority of the upwash from the wing itself closer to the ground, which means that it's going to affect the rearwards car more. And we've also increased the width of that downforce, which is not great. My solution on the matter? Mount a very wide wing up a fair bit higher and you solve both of these issues. And you don't need to run as much angle of attack for a given level of downforce, less upwash, less wing vortices. Of course, you can kind of see this in WEC or to a lesser extent in Formula E. Four is fixing the power. Now this may not sound like an aerodynamics change, but it actually is. High power means that you can create cars with more drag as you have more power to overcome it. What does this mean? Bigger wakes. This means more dirty air for the cars behind. So if you reduce the power, you naturally shift the balance of the aero to a low drag setup that you want to run, thus reducing the wakes and allowing the cars to get close together. This also means the benefits of slipstreaming will go up as any drag reduction becomes proportionally more important than a downforce gain, which can help make up for cornering losses due to dirty air. 
one need only take the extreme examples of Formula V to see how close the racing is there because they can't really run any aero at all. Number five is fixing tire aero. What do they do in the new rules? They increase the width. What means better aero? Smaller width, fair tires. Now obviously the wider tires make more mechanical grip, which is handy for increasing race excitement and overtaking prospects. However, they produce a lot more dirty air, which makes it harder to follow at higher speeds. So you've got to strike a balance here between your mechanical grip and how much dirty air you're throwing on. And the way that you could achieve that is by fairing the wheels and tires. That way you can still run a wider wheel, but you won't get that dirty air getting kicked up. But because of the sort of history of F1, because it's an open wheel racing, I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. Number six is mandate a minimum aero element size. This one is simple. Ban vortex generators below a certain size. This means you can't have turbulent eddies of a similar size to the vortices produced by your vortex generators affecting those generators significantly. Now, this removes all the cool little intricate details on the front wing and the side pod and stuff like that, and it will reduce performance a lot, but it will help overtaking if that's the main goal. So that's a few ways that F1 can improve overtaking from an aerodynamics point of view. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button below and check out my other videos and subscribe if you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time.